Every four years, crowds from across the world gather to witness the greatest moments in athletic history. But unbeknownst to the general public, these games are not just home to the Olympics. The Paralympic Games parallel the Olympic competition but involve world-class elite athletes with a range of disabilities. There are many sports, including wheelchair basketball, swimming, and para-athletics. Hello everyone, my name is Diana Nguyen. I'm one of the outreach coordinators at UCLA's Disabilities and Computing Programs office. And today I have some special guests to talk about the 2020 Games. Here we go. Hi, my name is Andak Kintosh. I'm 29 years old from Australia and I race in the T52 classification in the 100 and 400 meter events. I'm Jay Clappen, a T54 um, Paralympic wheelchair racer. I'm uh, 27 years old. I compete in the middle distance to long distance, which, which can include the 400, 800, 500, sometimes 5,000 and sometimes the marathon. So in our DCP office, Caroline, who is a wheelchair user and is someone we all know, she wrote a blog post about how she went almost two decades of her life without knowing about parasports um, or that they even existed. And her introduction to wheelchair basketball at, at UCLA really opened up new recreational activities and sports for her. What were your introductions to parasports in the Paralympics? Uh, for me, it was when I was in rehabilitation after my first accident, I was introduced to wheelchair rugby initially. I was still in rehab. Uh, a lot of the guys played rugby out of the rehabilitation, so I'd go watch them and jump in a chair and try to keep up with them. I didn't get introduced to athletics until I was back home and I was introduced to a local Paralympic wheelchair racer who convinced me to come down to the athletics track and give it a go and kind of just fell in love with it from there. Uh, yeah, similar. I think I think um, I was about 11 or 12 years old and mum, I don't even know how she found this out, but she was just like, hey, um, get in loser, we're going to Bendigo and we're going to go play wheelchair basketball. So that's where I sort of started. Everybody, everyone starts their sporting career with basketball. It's very accessible and not very difficult at the start. And then um, a couple of years into that, I think a coach I had at the time sort of said, look, you're really fast, but boy, you do not know how to shoot and you don't understand plays at all. <laughs> so he introduced me to um, Richard Coleman, a fellow wheelchair racer, and then um, he got me a chair and we just went, went from there. So on your website, Sam, you posted some of your recent 2020 times that qualified you for the Tokyo Games. And congrats to you and Jake for everything that you guys have been able to accomplish within Parasport so far. What are some memorable competitions y'all have participated up to this date? Recent, um, you know, accomplishment that I'm quite proud of is I, um, in the 2019 World Champs last year, obviously, I um, got into the finals of a 1500 after, you know, a crash and um, not my crash, but a, a particular crash. And, um, you know, I was able to keep my cool well enough. And then, um, and then it got into the final and then was able to place the best I've ever done before. Uh, my most memorable experience at a Paralympics or just sporting in general would be uh, the, my first Paralympic experience at 2012, the London Games. Just actually making it there was probably my best experience and most memorable experience, having previously rebroken really and fractured a uh, vertebrae in my neck, just one below my original injury that put me in the chair. So fighting back from that in nine months to be able to make it in and line up on the start line is probably my most memorable moment. Do y'all have any pre-race superstitions or traditions that y'all, that you do? Uh, for me personally, it's not so much superstition. I normally just kind of load up on caffeine, to be honest. <laughs> my hands aren't shaking. I'll probably go back and have another espresso. <laughs> two, two little espressos so my tummy's not too full. I, I won't eat too much so I feel you know not too I feel like nice and light and um ready to go I um for some reason seem to put my left glove on first which it's not really a superstition more but just a routine and then um you know make sure our tires are pumped up make sure everything's working and then um we get to the call room unfortunately the 2020 Tokyo games were postponed until the next year because of COVID-19 
what were Sam and Jake, what were your reactions to this news? Uh, I wasn't very, wasn't really surprised. I think a month before that, or maybe a bit less, um, our, a lot of our state borders had start to close and, um, a lot of the major marathons and major, um, qualifying comps like, you know, nationals or our Swiss trip were, um, were getting postponed or canceled. So it did just seem like it was, um, you know, just, just waiting for the, the postponement to happen. So I wasn't, wasn't really surprised. Yeah. I think being able to kind of process that it was probably very likely to happen, kind of softened the blow a little bit. It was a little disappointing having been pushing quite fast at the start of the year and kind of having that thought in the back of your head that, you know, this could turn into something good if I can stay healthy. But it also gives us an extra year to keep training and building on top of what we already have. It also just didn't seem like a very good time to put on a, a games. You know, people are isolating not in the best places not in the you know it wouldn't look very good to just have a huge expensive um games on right in the middle of a pandemic that's definitely brings up a really good point on the situations that people are being placed upon and i know like in past games one of the biggest criticisms that some of the hosting countries received was the stark difference between the visitors who visit the games and those who reside in the area in the aftermath of what their hometowns look like after the visitors come. So yeah, totally. really taking into consideration the influx of thousands and thousands of visitors from across the world to one condensed place, postponing the games was definitely a good call. So considering how difficult it is to plan ahead for the future and even with the occurrence of the games happening in 2021 that's up in the air how are you guys planning or making any preparations for those games in a way a a good opportunity to get that big base block of training in that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to at this time of the year we would be normally preparing to race over in europe and do some quicker events for qualifying times so it's not the worst thing in the world but you know, it is disappointing because you have psyched yourself up leading into this year. That there's a big event coming, so it is a little bit of a setback mentally to know that you have to go through another whole year before that big event is going to come around. Thank you, Sam and Jake, for joining us for this interview slash conversation and definitely sharing your experiences as Paralympians and just your experiences in general during COVID-19. I definitely don't want to end this interview on such hard notes. So I have some pictures of a calendar shoot y'all did together. Um, Do you guys want to explain what was going on in these photos? This was just a standard Tuesday night for us in the kitchen. (laughs) No, um, uh, we came up with the idea of just doing a bit of a fun calendar for a bit of a fundraiser. So we kind of came up with some crazy ideas and I think this is July. So this is what happens. (laughs) Your brain starts running out of ideas and suddenly it gets really erotic. (laughs) Just running out of content by by that time. We're like, oh, what can we do? We can get naked. So that's that's (laughs) what happened. Well, thanks again for talking to y'all, especially thanks for talking um, Sam and Jake, Sam, we've met before, but Jake, it was really nice to get to know you. And I hope that if the games do happen in 2021, hopefully I'll be there to see y'all in person. That would be awesome. Awesome. Still in America, one at a time. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, y'all.